Okay, this is uh, our screencast for a guidance for uh, 7007 PG Component 2, that's the Teaching Learning Assessment uh, assignment. Uh, so uh, it follows on from the suggested format that you've uh, uh, received by now, and it's just unpicking and explaining uh, how, uh, uh, how, how the assignment could go together. So, so just to, to, to underline, this is a suggested format based on on uh, fairly standard research paper uh, formats. So uh, overall we're looking at 3,000 words uh, and we've got title page, contents page, acknowledgements, uh, but the main sections are those five sections, introduction and context, critique of research methods, findings and interpretation, uh, discussion, uh, conclusion and recommendations followed by references and appendices. Um, just to uh, to point out in section three where it says findings and interpretation, uh, there's interpretation that is mainly going to be going on during the discussion, uh, but there's an element of interpreting the findings in the way you, you present the findings. So you're beginning the analysis, uh, uh, so asking the, uh, the who, where, well, who, what, when, where, why questions uh, in presenting your findings and then you're discussing it and interpreting the meaning in section four. Okay, so the front matter, that's the, the, the bits at the beginning of your assignment, are the title page. So you should in your title page have the title of your study. So you should have the component uh, name and co module code uh, and, the comp and the component two identified. You should have the, the title of your study, which could be your research question. Uh, your name, this isn't a, an anonymous uh, marked assignment, and your student ID, uh, the submission date, uh, and your route. And you should also identify your route leader that the assignment is being uh, submitted to. Your contents page uh, should have the headings that you've chosen for uh, structuring your uh, essay uh, with the page numbers. So that should be a separate page, so front page is title page, uh, contents page, with your headings and page numbers. Uh, and also within that, uh, there's an option to put uh, acknowledgements. Now, just to, to, to say about acknowledgements, you're, you're not uh, seeking to give thanks to everyone who's had any involvement whatsoever, uh, albeit minimal. You're just looking uh, to acknowledge uh, those who've had specific input and support uh, in preparing for this assignment. So for example, uh, discussions that you've had with university or school-based uh, tutors which have had a, a significant and formative impact on your thinking uh, either in the run-up to, during or after uh, the, the data gathering uh, in, this, uh, in this project. So that should be quite brief and, and only where it's appropriate. So moving into the main sections, the first section, Introduction and Context, as you can see is quite brief, 200 to 300 words. Uh, and in this you're going to need, uh, want to say what your uh, research focus or question is uh, and what you've been investigating. So some of you will have a, a research question. Um, there may in some cases be uh, maybe two or, or more questions, but you should make sure for, uh, for clarity's sake that you have an overarching question and anything that follows it is really unpicking and explaining. Uh, the uh, uh, the main research question, the main research focus. Uh, so that could be explaining your title, if your title is a very succinct and clear expression of what of what you're studying. Okay, so uh, uh, you're, you're also going to say uh, in this section if there's been any changes in your thinking or your methodological approach. So that's how you you gather data, your d data gathering or research methods since writing component one. Uh, so, so that's that's quite possible that's changed because you wrote component one uh, before you were in uh, your phase three assignment or phase three placement, uh, and you'll also outline any responses that you've made to feedback from component one. And uh, if you look at the assessment criteria, the grid uh, for for uh, uh, this uh, component, you'll notice that's one aspect that's that's mentioned uh, within. The assessment grid. So it's wise if there's, uh, if you've responded, if you have any feedback uh, that you've responded specifically to, highlight where you've responded to that feedback. Okay, uh, you're also going to talk here about the context of the research. So that's going to be your, your phase three 
um, uh, placement, whether that's in a school, college, uh, or elsewhere. So you might make reference to, to key statements or data from offset reports, uh, like the number on the roll, uh, the um, uh, number of, of free school meals, if that's relevant uh, to, to your assignment. Uh, but you need to ensure that you anonymize the school, uh, so you're not identifying the, the, uh, the, the name of the school itself uh, in the essay. Okay, in section I, I two, again I, I quite a brief one, I, it's going to be your critique of research methods. So remember we're talking about here research methods are uh, data gathering methods, so techniques for gathering data. Uh, these can range from uh, interviews, focus groups, uh, questionnaires, but are more likely in the context of this study to be participant observation uh, and document analysis. Uh, are two key bits of data uh, which you might have gathered. So, so essentially this is, what, uh, this is what you're talking about in this section. You're critiquing the research methods you've chosen. So you're talking about research design. Uh, so, so you're going to state the kind of research you've undertaken. So uh, in most cases you're going to be doing, doing action research where you identify an issue, you plan an intervention, you act on that intervention, you reflect on that inf intervention, uh, and then you identify uh, next steps, and and that cycle, uh, you're probably doing one cycle of that of that loop. Uh, in a full blown action research project, you do at least two cycles. So 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 you plan, act, evaluate, and then you'd uh, plan another intervention, act and evaluate, and that can go on. And that's actually what good teachers do. Uh, they they identify through their evaluations. Uh, of their lessons, uh, what they can improve and do differently. They plan an intervention, they act on that intervention, and then they, they evaluate the impact. So, uh, so you want to sort of talk about your uh, your research design, what what you're what you're doing to gather data. Uh, so you're going to state what research methods, uh, the, to the tools, and data gathering methods that you're using in the study and why. So uh, as I've mentioned, you you might uh, have chosen to participant observation. Uh, so this is you as an individual within a context. So you're not uh, a passive observer. Uh, you're, you're not uh, claiming to have uh, 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 the objectivity of an outsider. Uh, you are acting as a, sub sub a subjective participator uh, working with children in a classroom, you're engaged with the learning activity uh, and you're viewing it from that point of view. So that has benefits and uh, disadvantages. So benefits are that you're, you're in the context, uh, that, that you're actually directly involved with the intervention, but drawbacks are is, is you're, you're seeing things from your perspective that might, and that might be your own personal perspective the way you're you're interpreting it, or it might simply be your perspective physically. So what you can see, uh, what you can hear, and what you can uh, what you can otherwise sense. Uh, so so when you're talking about your research methods or data gathering techniques, you want to be critiquing the benefits and the drawbacks. And if you you're using more than one data gathering technique to triangulate uh, your uh, uh, your data, so uh, your observation. Um, might include your own observations as field notes uh, or your lesson evaluations written immediately after the lesson uh, or even lesson analysis forms written by mentors who've been observing you. But you might also uh, triangulate that against other data like document analysis, so the analysis of, uh, of uh, worksheets that you've been using or the analysis of, of work that pupils have produced, produced during lessons. Uh, so, uh, uh, and that is uh, that is in some ways part of your normal routine as as, te as a teacher and part of your in, in assessment and feedback. But but you're looking at that as as data, as evidence to uh, to tell you something about the intervention uh, that you've uh, been planning and evaluating. Okay, you're going to want to refer back to literature you've uh, you've cited in component one. Uh, you might have chosen different methods. But you, but you, you should be critiquing, looking at benefits and drawbacks of the methods you've gathered. Okay, so and you, uh, you'll uh, quite possibly include reference to the research context in terms of the sample. So the sample are going to be the class that you're working with. So that's going to, going to be a quite a limited population, 
uh, I, and that's going to be convenient to, to you. Uh, you might be looking at individuals within the class or, or a sample selector from within the class. It might be a specific group of pupils with uh, uh, specific profiles or you might be looking at, uh, at a sample uh, of, re of a range of profiles and that might be you've got a sample from uh, the uh, pupils with uh, uh, prior uh, attainment which is high, middle and low in comparison with the class. So you'll be looking at baseline data. Uh, you also want, you want to be saying how the sample was selected uh, and, and the kinds of data you've, got, you've gathered for that baselining. So IEPs, I mentioned their individual education plans, uh, baseline assessments might uh, be, uh, have been used to identify the sample either as the class that you're working with or as individuals or groups within that class if you're focusing on, on specific uh, individuals. Okay, section three uh, is the findings and interpretation. So this is beginning to be a, a more significant section, 500 to 800 words. You're going to present uh, any key data. That could be using tables, charts, graphs, other figures. That uh, might be uh, it might be uh, photographs of of people's work. Uh, it might be uh, maybe quotations from uh, fr from uh, lesson evaluations or observations by another teacher. Um, uh, little points on, on presenting in graphs. Um, if uh, you're, you're presenting in a graph, you might want to consider using bar graphs rather than pie charts. Pie charts are very popular, but what pie charts don't give you is they give you a sense of the, of the size of the, of the sample uh, and they, they sometimes can give you a false sense of, of, uh, of the data. So they're looking at percentages uh, and those percentages from, could be from a very small group. Uh, so not a very significant group. So you're better presenting as a as a as a bar chart or or presenting your data raw in, in a table. And that's that's a more straightforward way of presenting uh, your data. But it's appropriate data that you're presenting. Okay, quotations you might use uh, uh, of specific statements from lesson evaluations, observation, student feedback, or or whatever data you, you've you've gathered. Uh, and interpreted within the context of the study, so relevant to the research uh, questions or focus. Okay, uh, where you have undertaken things like questionnaires uh, or interviews, uh, you should select uh, key quotations to support your analysis. So it's being uh, uh, quite focused on the data you're presenting uh, that is directly relevant to your uh, uh, your research question or your research focus. Okay, so you don't have to present all the data you've gathered, but you should interpret this data carefully and then present uh, the the data uh, that is relevant uh, to your research, uh, I, I, your, your study. Okay, so explain what you think that the data means, highlight significant insights uh, that have been gained or how, or how you've uh, selected important data to uh, important findings to present. So moving into the discussion, uh, section four, again the most significant section. You're most likely going to split this up into a number of subsections uh, and that will really depend on your analysis of the data and any patterns or trends or categories that emerge uh, out of the study or they could be uh, patterns or, or categories that come out of literature as well. Okay, so you're going to sum up your key findings. You're going to ask what does the data you've gathered imply in relation to the literature you've read. So going back to component one, uh, does, uh, how does it relate to the literature? So compare your findings to the literature review uh, and your empirical data you've gathered through engaging in the research in the classroom. Um, you're going to discuss any similarities. You're going to discuss any differences, particularly with differences what what you want to think about is is it a real difference? Uh, so and why is there a difference? So it might be something that is a difference in the context where where the, the data was gathered between the literature and uh, uh, and the, the data that you've gathered in your context. So you want to try and uh, interpret where there are differences, whether it's a genuine difference or whether it's it's around interpretation. Okay, so uh, take care to consider relevant features of your research context. So that is 
uh, is being aware uh, that uh, the, the context, the, the school, the college, the institution that you're working in, uh, the, the pupils that you're working with uh, will uh, have a have an impact on the data you gather. So, so when you're interpreting that, you're not uh, going to assume that uh, the data you'd gather in a single-sex grammar school is going to be the same as you get in a mixed inner-city comprehensive. Uh, so, so the research type of research we're doing is very much context-driven, and you need to be uh, honest and open uh, around the, uh, the 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 limitations that that uh, that places. Uh, so, you're going to uh, I be conscious that you're not going to be able to, to make grand generalizations based on your observations in this study. What you'll be able to say is, I, with this class, at this time, I, I, with, with the activities uh, that, and interventions that you're working with, this is what happened. And this is what literature says to support this, or this is how I, I find something which seems to to be in opposition to what literature says. So is there any other literature that would support what I found or, or, or suggest uh, any alternative ways of looking at it? So in this section, it is really digging down into the meaning behind the, the findings from, from your study. Okay, finally going into another brief section. Now these, these are uh, word counts. Take them as, as guidance, not as a rigid hard and fast. Uh, you're, you're in your conclusions, you're going to provide a summary of what you initially set out to do, what you found, and what your findings tell you. You can identify specific implications, first of all for your future teaching, uh, for children's learning, particularly within uh, your, uh, uh, your lessons, but also for your continued professional development, so your CPD. Uh, and this is uh, quite a good time to make links to targets for your NQT year. In other words, uh, the career entry and development profile that we began looking at uh, earlier in May. Uh, so this all links links together in thinking about how this this process of uh, of identifying an issue, planning an intervention, acting on it, and evaluating uh, all links together with your professional development and um, becoming. An increasingly more effective uh, teacher, so constantly progressing and developing. And make sure when you're concluding that you're you're only making uh, conclusions or, or claims that you can just uh, justify. Uh, so again, uh, being aware of the context and the limitations. Uh, so uh, um, so so you avoid saying what you think, but look at what the the data suggests and what literature says to support it. Uh, that's that's really important within research findings, that that it's not it's not a soapbox. It's it's uh, you looking at uh, at data uh, and you interpreting that and being being very focused uh, and uh, and drawing justifiable conclusions. Okay, so uh, so within that section, it's all about key actions recommendations uh, uh, you can take for the NQT year from from this research project. Uh, and coming into references, just to reiterate what we talked about before, uh, whether it's books, journals, websites, uh, you should list them alphabetically uh, by author. We got uh, uh, titles by the same author, but the most recent first. And there's lots of, of guides for, for referencing, but the Anglia Ruskin uh, website and the, the John Muir's one are, are, are ones that are worth looking at and giving you uh, so, some structure and some guidance for different types of, of, uh, of references. Uh, and finally, uh, looking at the, uh, uh, the appendices. First of all, the, the, the essential uh, appendices or appendix should be uh, the unit of work in the LGMU pro forma. Uh, appropriate lesson plans to go along with that. Uh, evaluations from those lessons as part of data. Uh, observation forms, that's the lesson analyses forms uh, from when you've been observed by mentors, uh, any baseline assessment data uh, and so on. You might put uh, some specific but not every teaching resource. Uh, now the advantage of this is you're going to be uploading this to your ePortfolio as well. So it's doing two things. It's supporting your research assignment but it's also supporting your, your QTS ePortfolio.
So other things you might include. You might have some, some specific and relevant examples of students' work, so indicative samples, not everything, so things which tell you something important. Uh, important information about particular student or students or groups, uh, so like IEPs, uh, SEN or Gifted Talent Registers, but you must make sure that, uh, that any names of individuals or schools are obscured or removed uh, from, uh, from any data that you use and you, you've got permission from the school to include this, this data. Uh, so uh, anonymity is, is really important. Uh, so, uh, uh, so as it says there are no materials uh, that, uh, uh, that, that are used that could, could identify individual students uh, or the school. So, uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, giving you some outline of, of basic structure. Uh, so the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll finish on is to say make sure before you submit, uh, uh, you finish and submit uh, this assignment that you read the assessment criteria carefully and ensure that you've, that, that you've addressed each of the criteria just in the same way as you would do when you're teaching uh, an examination group uh, as a teacher. Uh, you're going to look at the assessment criteria then you want to make sure that you yourself are, are looking at the assessment criteria uh, when you're constructing uh, this, uh, this assignment. So all the best and we look forward to reading uh, your results.